In part one of our do-it-yourself 5 kilowatt solar setup, we did the unboxing of the kit to show you all the parts that make up the system. In this segment, we'll be using diagrams to show you how we put the whole system together for a test. We'll also talk about the pieces that are needed aside from what the kit came with. And we'll show you a working test when it's all put together. Let's get started. Let's start by taking two solar panels outside and covering them so they don't generate any power while we're making our connections. Next, we connect the pair in series by connecting the positive red wire of one of the panels to the negative black wire of the other panel. As each panel is 18 volts, connecting them in series results in an output of 36 volts. The amperage, however, remains the same at 5.56 amps. Next, we take the black wire of the first panel and connect it to our 20 foot black 10 gauge extension and the red wire of the second panel to our red 20 foot 10 gauge extension. All these connections use the built in MC4 connectors on the ends of the wires. We then connect the red and black extension wires to our breaker with it in the off position. Now we move on to the controller where we connect our 8 gauge 6 foot red wires bare end to the controller's positive battery connection. We do the same thing with the negative end of the wire which goes into the controller's negative battery connection. We're not going to connect them to the battery just yet because we're going to connect the batteries themselves together. We connect our batteries together in parallel by hooking up our roughly 2 foot red 4 gauge wires from the positive connectors of each battery to the next one. We do this one by one, red to red, red to red, and so on. Then we repeat the process by doing the same thing to the negative black connectors from one battery to the next. Lastly, we connect the other end of the 8 gauge black wire coming from the controller to the negative battery connection it's important to hook it up to the first battery and then the red will go to the last battery so that everything is distributed evenly. This is the information I was given from expert power. The red 8 gauge wire coming out of the controller is done a little differently because it has to go through a 70 amp fuse first. So we hook it to our 70 amp fuse. Next we connect another 8 gauge red wire to the other end of the fuse then connect the other end of the wire to the last battery's positive connection as explained before. The controller should light up and allow us to check the settings on it to make sure it is set to the proper battery voltage and composition type. Once we know all the settings are correct we can move on. Down here I have everything very crudely set up for the moment. Nothing is bolted down yet. This is strictly for this test. I'm going to have to have a platform that this is going to sit on for better airflow and then some kind of box to cover the whole thing to keep people from accidentally touching anything on here. You can see the batteries are all in parallel. Our next step is to connect the black 10 gauge wire to the output side of the breaker using the MC4 end of the wire. And then we do the same for the red wire. Finally, we connect the bare end of the black 10 gauge wire coming from the breaker to the controller's negative solar terminal. Then we do the same thing for the red positive wire. Now we remove the covers from the solar panels. When we turn on the breaker, we expect the display on the controller to show that the power is flowing from the solar panels all the way to the battery. Here we're looking at the battery voltage. This is showing us the charging PV voltage, which is what's coming from the solar panels. The incoming voltage dropped a bit, I'm guessing a little bit of shade outside. Now it's back. Next we see the load watt hour. Similarly, 
The load amperage is also zero since nothing is connected yet that is using power. This is the load mode which is set to manual for DC. Next is the error status which shows zero so no error. We also see the controller temperature in Celsius. Next it shows us the charging watt hours we have. Now we're looking at the charging amperage. Finally the battery capacity. Here we're looking at the app which monitors the batteries through Bluetooth and gives us general information. This is the cell data view and it's telling us the charge on the various cells. It's got four cells in each battery and I'm connected to one battery at the moment. They seem to be consistent roughly with each other as expected. This is the warning pane, a whole bunch of information. I switched to a different battery. The app works very well. They don't have it for the iPhone yet, unfortunately, so I had to just use a uh, another phone just so that I can have this capability and keep an eye on things. The support has been excellent from the company, I have to say that. I call them, they explain everything, and they're very, very good about getting you information, and in general, they've been dynamite. This is already preset correctly to match the battery, 5, battery type. And the other one says basically 60 hertz and AC. Since we've verified the settings on the inverter, the next step is to connect the inverter to the rest of the system and turn it on. We take our 1-0 gauge red wire and connect one end of it to the first battery's positive connector. Then connect the other end to the 400 amp fuse. Next, we take our other 1-0 red gauge wire and connect one end to the other end of the 400 amp fuse. Then connect the other end of the wire to the positive connector of the inverter. Finally, we connect the zero gauge black wire to the negative connector of the first battery. Then we connect the other end to the inverter's negative connector. Note that whatever way you do this, when you complete the loop, you may get a tiny spark at the connection point. Now with the inverter switch off, we need to plug the switch into the inverter. This is built on a switch plate and it's got an extension wire that goes into the inverter. So we plug that in. Since the switch plate is off right now, the inverter is still not on, but when we turn it on, we see the display come to life. And the whole system just came on the moment that uh, the batteries were hooked up because they were not empty, they had a little bit in them. We're ready for our test. It works! Look at that! Wow! I can't believe it all works together. Wow! Gonna disassemble it and get ready once I have a platform to put it together permanently. Now let's discuss the additional parts I needed to complete my configuration. Remember that the kit was designed for use in an RV and I'm adapting it somewhat for household standalone use. I needed several black and red 10 gauge wires so I could either buy the lengths I needed or cut them down to size from a larger wire. But either way, I needed the MC4 connectors on all ends to go from the solar panels to the breaker. I also needed an extra red 1-0 gauge wire 
that's three feet long to go from the 400 amp fuse to the inverter with 3 8 inch lugs on both ends. Also required were three red and three black 4 gauge wires with 3 8 inch lugs on both ends to connect the batteries together. I could have used 6 gauge but preferred the heavier 4 gauge. The other wire that was necessary is a 3 foot 6 gauge red wire with 3 8 inch lugs on both ends to go from the 70 amp fuse to the batteries. For the test I used the cables that came with the system which were 8 gauge to go from the controller to the fuse and the battery but later I will probably replace them with the 6 gauge to match the one I added. I also needed the 70 amp fuse and of course the 400 amp fuse and then the 20 amp breaker with a box it came with 4 MC4 connectors and it happens to be waterproof though for my purposes that is not necessary. I bought a solar wire crimper presuming I would need it. Lastly I needed grounding wire which we'll discuss in the future. As our series continues we will give some tips on putting the system together without having to crimp any wires. We'll also discuss some subtleties that can save you time and headache as you learn from our own mistakes. We'll show you how we put the whole system together with all the panels outside and well let's not give too much away so subscribe and you'll see what else is coming. Hope this is helpful to you. We've certainly enjoyed making it. Thank you for watching.